problem now is future peace. That is your job in Germany. By your conduct and attitude while on guard inside Germany, you can lay the groundwork of a peace that could last forever. Or just the opposite. You could lay the groundwork for a new war to come. And just as American soldiers had to do this job 26 years ago, so other American soldiers, your sons, might have to do it again another 20 odd years from now. Germany today appears to be beaten. Hitler, out. Swastikas, gone. Nazi propaganda, off the air. Concentration camps, empty. You'll see ruins. You'll see flowers. You'll see some mighty pretty scenery. Don't let it fool you. You are in enemy country. Be alert, suspicious of everyone. Take no chances. You are up against something more than tourist scenery. You are up against German history. It isn't good. This book was written chapter by chapter, not by one man, not by one Führer. It was written by the German people. Chapter one. Führer, Bismarck. The title, Blood and Iron. The armies, German. Under the Prussian Bismarck, the German Empire was built. The German states combined, serving notice to all that their religion was iron, that their god was blood. Bismarck's German Empire built itself by war, at the expense of Denmark, Austria, and France became in 1871 the mightiest military power in all Europe. Enough conquest for a while. Time out to digest it. Europe relaxes. The danger is over. Nice country, Germany. Tender people, the Germans. And very sweet music indeed. Chapter 2, a new Führer, Kaiser Wilhelm, new title, Deutschland über alles, Germany over all. And the same tender German people smacked us with their World War I against Serbia, Russia, France, Belgium, Italy, Britain. United States of America. It took all of us to do it, but we finally knocked that Führer out, defeated the German armies. Second chapter ended. We marched straight into Germany and said, why these people are okay. It was just that Kaiser we had to get rid of. You know, this is really some country. When it comes to culture, they leave the whole world. We bit. We poured in our sympathy. We pulled out our armies. And they flung chapter three in our faces. Fear number three. Slogan number three. Today, Germany is ours. Tomorrow, the whole world. Oh, hell, this is where we came in. Yeah. This is where we came in. And chapter four? Could be. It can happen again. The next war. That is why you occupy Germany. To make that next war impossible. No easy job. In battle, you kept your wits about you. Don't relax that caution now. The Nazi party may be gone. The Nazi thinking, Nazi training, and Nazi trickery remain. The German lust for conquest is not dead. It's merely gone undercover. Somewhere in this Germany are the SS guards, the Schutzstaffel, the Gestapo gangsters. Out of uniform, you won't know them, but they'll know you. 
Somewhere in this Germany are stormtroopers by the thousands. Out of sight, part of the mob, but still watching you and hating you. Somewhere in this Germany, there are two million ex-Nazi officials. Out of power, but still in there. And thinking, thinking about next time. Remember that only yesterday, every business, every profession was part of Hitler's system. The doctors, technicians, clockmakers, postmen, farmers, housekeepers, toy makers, barbers, cooks, dock workers. Practically every German was part of the Nazi network. Guard particularly against this group. These are the most dangerous. German youth. Children, when the Nazi party came into power, they know no other system than the one that poisoned their minds. They are soaked in it. Trained to win by cheating. Trained to pick on the weak. They've heard no free speech. Read no free press. They were brought up on straight propaganda. Products of the worst educational crime in the entire history of the world. Practically everything you believe in, they have been trained to hate and destroy. They believe they were born to be masters, that we are inferiors, designed to be their slaves. They may deny it now, but they believe it, and will try to prove it again. Don't argue with them. Don't try to change their point of view. Other allied representatives will concern themselves with that. You are not being sent into Germany as educators. You are soldiers on guard. You will observe their local laws, respect their customs and religion, and you will respect their property rights. You will not ridicule them. You will not argue with them. You will not be friendly. You will be aloof, watchful, and suspicious. Every German is a potential source of trouble. Therefore, there must be no fraternization with any of the German people. Fraternization means making friends. The German people are not our friends. You will not associate with German men, women, or children. You will not associate with them on familiar terms, either in public or in private. You will not visit in their homes, nor will you ever take them into your confidence. However friendly, however sorry, however sick of the Nazi party they may seem, they cannot come back into the civilized fold just by sticking out their hand and saying, I'm sorry. Don't clasp that hand. It's not the kind of a hand you can clasp in friendship. But there are millions of Germans. Some of those guys must be okay. Perhaps. But which ones? Just one mistake may cost you your life. Trust none of them. Someday, the German people might be cured of their disease. The super race disease. The world conquest disease. But they must prove that they have been cured beyond the shadow of a doubt before they ever again are allowed to take their place among respectable nations. Until that day, we stand guard. We are determined that their plan for world conquest shall stop here and now. We are determined that they shall never again use peaceful industries for warlike purposes. We are determined that the vicious German cycle of war, phony peace, War, phony peace. War, phony peace. Shall once and for all time come to an end. That is your job in Germany.